I'm Enrique Serna. Next on Conversations, actor Benga Akinabe. He made his mark as the cold-blooded enforcer Chris Partlow on the hit HBO series The Wire. We'll learn about his unlikely path to becoming an actor and taking on the challenges of a one-man show in Seattle. Benga Akinabe, next on Conversations. Local production and broadcast of Conversations at KCTS 9 is made possible in part by KCTS 9 members and by a major grant from the Floyd and Dolores Jones Foundation and by viewers like you. Thank you. Benga Akinabe. Thank you for being here on Conversations. Thanks for having me. I got to say right off the top here that uh, I'm a big fan of yours from The Wire. <laughs> and I think a lot of people are a big fan of yours, not only from your role in The Wire, but the show itself. Uh, critics have called it perhaps the best television series ever created. When you hear that, <laughs> how do you react? Um, I, I tend to agree with them. It's... It, was such a rare thing on television, the the quality of the writing, the quality of the acting, and 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 the and the how how much we tried to stay true to story and not necess not sensationalize anything. It's a very difficult thing to do in on television because it's you're encouraged to sensationalize to to try to get as many audience members as possible, and that we had to make it not our goal. And, and maybe the fact that it was on cable, HBO, mm -hmm. uh, it was, in many ways, it was not an easy series to watch because it was about crime, it was about corruption, um, it was about uh, drugs, it was about people's weaknesses, and you played the role of a cold-blooded enforcer, which is not you at all, <laughs> but you played the character Chris Partlow, who was the... Uh, the enforcer for Marlo Stanfield, mm. who was a uh, also cold-blooded drug dealer. Mm. Um, I, tell me about that character and, and how it came about, about that you got that role. Uh, it's very interesting because I was actually cast in another role. Actually, let me back up. I was actually an extra on The Wire <laughs> in the pilot I actually episode. saw that, too. <laughs> you were a cop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even before then, I was background. Like, you couldn't even see me. I was just walking back and forth. Yeah. And then a few episodes later in the first season, I was a cop. I come into a courtroom and I sit down. I was so nervous. I hadn't even been on screen before. <laughs> just looking around, very uncomfortable. <laughs> and then, uh, meanwhile, I was doing theater in D.C. and and continued to submit myself and audition for different things. And the the creators of the show would bring me back to audition for different roles. And eventually, I uh, I was cast in the role of Slim Charles, actually. Uh, at this time, I, I went back to school to study acting because I was already working as an actor, and I, and I decided to go back and, and learn more about the craft. And the first, my first day of filming Slim, for Slim Charles, I had a final, and uh, <laughs> and so I was really ignorant at the time. Let me just preface it that way. <laughs> so there was a lot about the industry I didn't know. Uh, but you don't pass up these opportunities. You don't pass up things. these opportunities. Yeah. You know, I wasn't happy at the program I was in, but I wanted to finish what I had started, and so. I, I, turned, I turned it down. I said I couldn't do it. Nah, they said, why? I said, I have a final. They said, you have a final? <laughs> I was like, yeah. And so they recast. And uh, at the end of that year, uh, I knew I wasn't going back to where, where I was studying. And so I started thinking, maybe I shouldn't have turned down that role on HBO. And then they called me uh, a few weeks later and said, the writers and producers really like you. They have a, a, another role, and they want to know if you'll take it. And I said, hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then, Chris, Chris came to being. He started out as a reoccurring, and then became one of the leads. And it was a very, in it's been a very interesting journey on that show. Yeah, it, it was interesting too because uh, this was a show made of a lot of character actors mm. that had an opportunity to come together to take uh, really kind of an ensemble type of approach to all of this, but. Um, you know, I think the thing that struck me about this and, and why I got so hung hung up on watching it is uh, the grittiness mm. uh, and also the realness to it. Uh, let's face it, it was 
pretty real of what was happening in Baltimore. Absolutely, and it's and, and Baltimore. It was set in Baltimore. Yeah, and it's it's really any American city, any major American city, and I think that's why it it, it resonated with so many people, not just in the United States. And so, there were no stars, like you mentioned. These were all character actors and people who were, were great actors, but not necessarily big names. And the creators of the show wanted really good actors and not necessarily big names. And when we were doing the show, we realized that the star of the show was Baltimore. It wasn't any of us. I mean, we, any one of us, whether you're a politician on the show, uh, a, a, a hood or a, journalist. Or, or a journalist or a teacher, any one of you could catch a bullet. <laughs> you know? And we, they, they would sacrifice any of the actors for, for, the, for the quality of the show, which, in, which was understandable if you're, really, if you're thinking about making something of high quality and not necessarily just getting in high ratings because viewers are following particular actors and so on. So a good example is that with, uh, with Idris Elba, who's a great actor, and he was very, very popular on the and show. And he played a character called Stringer Bell, who was a drug dealer and also the head of a, a group. Exactly, and he was trying to get, clean, get his money clean and so on, and he was very popular on the show. But to stay true to what would happen in the streets, you know, if a, if, a, if a character like Stringer Bell was doing the things that Stringer Bell was doing, there's a good chance he wouldn't, he wouldn't last as long. And in the show, he didn't. They so killed him off. They killed him off. Yeah. And there was, you know, some uproar and people felt certain ways about it. But in the end, in the long run, people realized that was what, that's what this show would do and could do for the integrity of the show. And it was about the story and about the writing. Exactly. So did you worry that you were going to get killed of off? Of course. Chris, Chris and, was like, and he, cause he, he was, was a killer. I, yeah, he was a killer. So lots of times, when, lots of times killers get killed. Um, it's the, it's the circle of the jungle. And so I, I, you never knew every script, you never knew what was going to happen, but it was also exciting. We were so excited to get the scripts when, um, when we did, because one, the, the writing was so good. It was like getting a, a small, great novel that you knew was coming in your mail. But also, you didn't know if <laughs> that might be your last script. So, it, 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 yes, I, 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 I worried about it, but I also knew that I, what, we, what we had done already was, was such an accomplishment. There was another character that was a sidekick of yours <laughs> yeah. named Snoop, and her name was Felicia Pearson. That's her, right. Her real name. And actually, she kind of was very much her that character. Mm, that Snoop was her her real street name when she came to the show. Like right. that's they took Snoop and put her on on film. And the fact that they did that was it, because uh, she wasn't an actress. Was she? No, no, she wasn't an actress. And and David and Ed took a huge chance. David on, Simon, Ed David Burns, Simon, yeah. and Ed Burns. They took a huge chance on this young lady with so much charisma, and and it paid off. They 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 wrote for her and they wrote around her and, and brought out what she could what she could bring and it just and it blew up on screen and uh, she came from a difficult background and she did so did you guys get to know her and her situation we did Snoop and I we, I mean, she was my partner on the show so we we we, we hung out tight and <laughs> she would um I grew up south of Baltimore just a half hour uh she was Baltimore all day so, so every once in a while I'd hang out with her after filming and she'd show me some, some interesting parts of the city. Yeah, yeah. It was, what did the people of Baltimore think of this? Because this, this was really a hard look at a city and it did not paint a pretty picture. It, you know, it was controversial in Baltimore. Um, many people loved the show. Many people felt honored that their stories were being depicted on, on, on television, whether they were, they were teachers who were struggling or they were drug dealers and killers who were also struggling. They, they felt great to see something that looked like them, that went through their, someone who went through their experiences on television, represented. Then there were people who felt it put Baltimore in a bad light. It brought a lot of income to the city, right. I should say. But there were people who felt that it put Baltimore in a bad light. At the time, the, the mayor was really not feeling the show. Who's now the governor of uh, of uh, Maryland. Maryland? And it's funny because the the mayor was on, in, on the show was kind of loosely based off of of, of, uh, of O'Malley. Uh, so that's that that may also be a reason why he wasn't digging the show so much. <laughs> but here's the thing about the wire: there was there's no one who's all good or all bad. That that mayor started out with the best intent. The mayor on the fictional mayor on on the show started out with the best intentions, and he did a lot of good. And then he also compromised himself, and 
that kind of twists people who are watching it because you can't count on your good guys always doing the good things, and that and that and that disturbs us. And, we, and then you're even more surprised when you see these people who you're. It's very easy and comfortable to hate. All of a sudden, do something that's just so small and beautiful and may save a life, like Chris. You know, right. so it, right. And and where he actually one of the other characters whose father had been abusing him mm -hmm. at one point, and then Chris sort of. Uh, sympathizes but also then kills the, it, the father it was it was a choice of letting that abuse continue now going to to michael lee that's the the young man that chris yeah. takes under his, his wing his younger brother who he, who hasn't been molested yet but you know it's coming letting it continue or ending it and chris also it's the, sh the show is beautiful in its subtleties chris has o had also been molested so it when he saw that look in in michael's eye he knew and he knew what he had to do yeah and, yeah. and it wasn't really stated in the show, but you knew it. Uh, exactly, yeah, which right. is, again, why it's so beautiful in its subtleties. I don't think Chris even intended to. <laughs> Chris didn't intend to, to go off on him yeah. that way. He's, intent, he's, a very, he's a sociopath. He's very methodical. He's, he, he does things a certain way. And he, he had intended to take this man into a vacant house and kill him. That's how Chris does it. But he, he's, I think it was the only time in this series where you see him lose control. Despite all his horrific acts, this is the only time where he's actually lost control. A little bit more on the wire, and then let's uh, move on here. But uh, the show was on the air for what five, six seasons? It five seasons. Okay, and you were with it for um, as Chris three, four, and five. Okay, but yet it even it's been off now for what almost a couple of years as we mm -hmm. talk. It still has this following, huge presence. And, uh, I know it's on demand and and it's available by the DVD, but I guess around the world, you even hear that from people you know. A, a huge from where? presence. Uh, I have a friend who was in Ireland not too long ago, and uh, she called me to tell me she was watching watching me right now in the wire on the Celtic Channel. Uh, <laughs> in the in the UK, they, they they're watching it five nights a week. They, it's huge over there in the UK. The show is spreading now that it's been off the air. And people are actually getting the chance to, to see it. I don't know if it was necessarily advertised as well when it was on the air, but now it's like a, a cult hit. It's got word of mouth and so on. And and I, I've gotten I've gotten fan mail from Korea, from Japan. I mean, it's 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 such an important show, and people are really registering with it. And do people ever approach you that? You're like Chris, or wondering if you're yes, yes, it's particularly when the show is on. I, I a couple of times people. There are people who approach me wanting me to be like Chris because that's that they want yeah. that. And then there are people who get startled when I, I live in New York. I, I remember this one time I was coming out of the train, and this woman she jumped back when she saw me, and then she started laughing when she realized because when people I guess their 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 reference to me was the show, and so when they're not, when they're not thinking, it automatically goes back to the show, and then there's that that level of fear. <laughs> that happened with Russell Simmons once when we were we were at a at something for his his uh, his nonprofit rush, and and, uh, and Stan Lathan was was taking um, Jamie Hector and I to to meet Russell. Jamie Hector played the Jamie Marlo Hector Stan plays Marlowe. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. So we're in an elevator going down, and the elevator opens up, and Russell's there. And Russell takes a second and jumps back, and then he starts laughing because I understand the reference. Yeah. Whenever you saw Jamie and 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 myself or myself and uh, and yeah. Snoop, it. It was a negative connotation. Right, right. Well, are they after me or what? Yeah. Let's talk about you and where you came from and how you got into acting. Your parents are Nigerian? Mm -hmm. My whole family. <laughs> okay. I was born in D.C. and I grew up in Maryland. Um, it was an interesting ride because I, I, I studied political science and English in college. Um, but, but I was recruited to Wrestle Division One. that's how I got into college, and uh, it was an amazing thing. I kind of fell backwards into wrestling my junior year in high school, and then I got recruited the next year. And then when I graduated, I was intending to continue to wrestle and train for international competition. You wanted to go to the Olympics. I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and meanwhile, while waiting for sponsorship, I took a position with the federal government. And uh, I was there for a year working at the Corporation for National Service, which is the headquarters of AmeriCorps and VISTA and so on, in their Congressional Affairs Department. I'm, I'm very into politics, even though it's a, it's a <laughs> dirty, dirty game. <laughs> I'm, I'm keeping it clean right yeah. now from what I really want to say. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in how the world functions and how we think the world functions. And, uh, and then I was there a year, and I got curious about acting. 
not intending to become an actor. I just got curious about it. So I did some research to see what actors do in theater. I, had, I didn't know anything about theater. And, I, pe and it was the first time I, I, someone had mentioned to me theater as a, as a profession that people, their friends had done as a profession. So I bought some books, went online, uh, and started to discover what actors do and how they do it. Then I started going on auditions in the DC area, still actually not intending to become an actor. I liked my job. Um, I was monitoring hearings on the hills, so like the, the pulse of the, the nation. Right. Uh, and so I'd go on these auditions and just for fun after work. And then I got called from the Shakespeare Theater one day and uh, they, they, they offered me a role and uh, I, kind of, I kind of freaked out. And, I, and I, I said, oh, I'll call you back and I hung up. And uh, five seconds later, my uncle called me and told me my father died. Oh. And so that was like a sign to me. I, 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 didn't even, I don't think I even thought about it. I just got up and wanted, went into my supervisor's office and, and resigned. And, I, and that week, during the week, I was picking out funeral arrangements and doing all that. And during the evenings, I'm rehearsing with people who I grew up watching on television. You know, I'm rehearsing doing theater, which I've never done before. It was a very odd time in my life, but it, it seemed like a natural transition as well. So I've been acting since. Got your calling. For, it's funny, because I, I love acting, and it pays the bills, and I think I'm pretty decent at it. But I don't, I don't think it's the only thing I will do in life. It's what I'm doing right now, you know? I may do something different five years from now. You You want to write? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You've, I, and there, you wrote some articles for the New York Times. I yeah, read them. That, that's crazy. And, and one of them was about how you uh, you had flat feet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I have very flat feet. Um, and and but was, the New York Times printed your article. It's, it's, it's wild. Well, I wrote my first article. It was about a trip to the Himalayas I yeah. took with my friend and my agent. Um, and they they dug the article, and and it's been kind of a cool partnership since the time I love the times I love going over there and hanging out and just just like I, I, it's wild I'm a freelance writer for the times which is really weird to me but they they've been really responsive to my writing and uh, and so I was having this surgery and uh, and I and I spoke about it to one of the editors and they, they thought it'd be pretty interesting um, to explain you know this because it's a common problem but it might happen to be very severe I, I I, I don't like going under the knife, and so I avoided this as much as possible, but, orth but orthotics weren't working, taping wasn't working, so, and it was causing me pain in my knee, increasing pain in my knees and my back, and it was all from a lack of arches, and the body um, adjusting in, in ways that caused more pain. So you wrote all about it, which probably a yeah. lot of people could relate to. Oh, a lot of people did. Yeah. A lot of people did. I was really surprised at the feedback. I mean, it, people were really, uh, were really, passionate about the feedback. Some people were upset that I got surgery and they let it known and some people were were very encouraged by it. It was I was really surprised. So do you think you want to write or you want to go into politics one day? Um, I, I do I do want to write, continue writing. Um, I'm writing now. Um, there's some projects that I'm interested in doing that I'm doing so we'll see how that goes. That does and I and I'm acting as well. As we speak, you're just wrapping up a uh, one-man performance at the Intamon, The Thin Place. Uh, you were excellent in it. You've gotten great reviews. Thank uh, you. The audiences have really come to, to watch you. But doing a one-man play, because this is what, about an hour and a half or so, yeah. I think? And yeah. it's all you. It's all you. Uh, Tell me about that, about how you prepare yourself mentally. You, you've never done this before. I've never done this before. It's exhausting. I didn't know how I was going to do this. But I, I knew I had to because I was intimidated. And so as, as soon as I realized I was intimidated, I knew I had to do this. It, I remember the director giving me the script. I agreed to do this before there was a script. And then I'd come out here and, um, to Seattle and we'd workshop it. And then when we started rehearsing, that's when I first had this, the semblance of the script. And uh, I started going through it instinctively with a highlighter to look for my part. And 
but I'm totally forgetting that it was a one-man show. And, and you play 11 different characters. I play 11 characters. Male and female. Male, female, older, younger. Pretty good dancer in that whole ah, thing. Yeah, okay. I like that. You thank know. thank yeah, you. There's, there's a little dancing. With my hips. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the women like it. The <laughs> it, it, was, it was interesting. It was, yeah. I, I had a lot of fun. And the director reminded me when he gave me the script, like, no, these are all your, your words. And so I had to be constantly reminded that it, there were no other actors on stage. Um, it's been a, an amazing experience. It's pushed me further than I've ever been pushed before. How do you go about memorizing the lines for all of this? Because it's all, all on you, and you've got to do accents, you've got to uh, do transitions, all these things, but it, it puts you in a one-man situation where you're carrying a show. Fear. <laughs> Fear. I, I have to do it. Right? Yeah. Like, there's nobody else to blame it. I can't point to the other actor and say, look how you messed up. No, no. I, and it's oh, doing it over and over and getting it in my body. And I, having a great director, because Andrew he conceived this. Andrew, Andrew Russell, Russell is right. the director. Yeah. At the end of mine. At the end of mine. He's the associate producer there now. He just, he's just come out from New York and he's been there for a few months with Kate Wachowski, who's the new artistic director. Yeah. And when he conceived it and then asked me to do it, I was honored. Because he knew I'd never done anything like this before, but he, he, he thought I could, and so. I, I, step up to challenges. That's that's who I am, and and I didn't know how I was going to do this. That didn't mean I wasn't intimidated. I was, but Andrew helped, helped me learn how to do this show and then take it and run with it, which was amazing. Besides the wire. Besides acting at the Intimat in a one-man performance, uh, you've had other roles. You were in the movie Savages with mm. Laura Linney and uh, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, which uh, was probably pretty interesting playing with those two. That was um, my first movie, and I was doing that at the same time as The Wire. So it was an amazing experience. And Philip and Laura were were so good to me. And Philip Bosco, he that he is so funny. Yeah. I had a great experience with those actors. And uh, but you're going to be in another movie that's coming out here this summer. So yes. the lottery uh, ticket. Tell me about that. The lottery ticket is a comedy. My first urban film. Uh, urban like, meaning that it is a urban is mainstream for yeah, black. black film. Yeah. Uh, so go out and see it, even if you're not black. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's 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 Alcon and Warner Brothers. Alcon um, Productions. They did. Uh, the blind, the blind Side and Book of Eli. Oh, really? really great producers over there, really good company. And tell me about who are the people that you're playing with. I'm that. with uh, Bow Wow, uh, Loretta Devine, Keith David, uh, Charlie Murphy, Bill T. Bellamy, he's in there. Bill Bellamy. Yeah. It's, it's a large, funny yeah. and Mike Keith, Epps, yeah, and Keith Ice Cube. Keith David is the guy that uh, Ken Burns has used often to mm. do narrations. Oh, many Keith has a great, yeah, great, great voice that great just voice. captures you. Yeah, you listen yeah. to it when he's speaking. Yeah. You know, and Ice Cube, it's, 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 Ice Cube is so funny. <laughs> People would not guess that, but that dude is so funny. Benga, you're what, 31? 30, yes, 31. Hey, you're a pretty young guy. <laughs> uh, you've had some great opportunities here. I, I've been very fortunate. I'm, I, but I also consider myself a hustler. I, I, I've been very blessed, but I do believe in making things happen. I, I, I will drive myself crazy waiting for anything. Yeah. So. Wrestling. You haven't given up on that. No, no, I still love to wrestle. I did my last tournament in uh, in 07 in Maryland, and I won, by the way, the tournament, <laughs> but I couldn't move my body the next day, so. <laughs> I mean, do you still have aspirations for trying to You want, me, shot want me to be honest? Things? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think about it all the time. I actually, sometimes, uh, not sometimes, lots of times I watch the UFC, and I think about, you know. Oh, that? Yeah, as, as well. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's very, God. it's different than wrestling, obviously. <laughs> But it's, it's something that I'm completely capable of. And, and I, I love competition. I love physical sports. And, it's, and these sports are beautiful to me. Boxing, these things are, are beautiful to me. Because no one, you get in there and you, got, and you break yourselves down mentally and physically. And you're, and you're in competition with this other person in combat. And at the end, it's, there's like this camaraderie with the other person. Like, because no one understands what you went through but that other person. It's, it's beautiful. Now, your parents were from Nigeria, but you mm. never picked up the language. But what you are good at is speaking Spanish. I do speak Spanish, yes. How did you learn that? In Mexico. Yeah. In Mexico. I studied abroad in Guadalajara, and uh, I've been back many times to visit my friends and, 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 and people who I consider family down there. And, just, and I love Mexico. Mexico is like a second home to me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so comfortable. I, I've been all through that country, 
and and my my Spanish is very Mexican. So. It's actually very good. Oh, hey, thank you. Heck of a lot better than mine. Um, <laughs> thank you. Do you, would you like to come back and work here in Seattle again uh, with the Inamon or any of the uh, other? Me encantaría. Me yeah. encantaría. I'd love to. I'd love to. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This this the Inamon is a great theater, and they're very nurturing to artists, very nurturing to the process, and 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 they also happen to have a great professional. Avenue, so absolutely, lots of times those things don't go hand in hand, you know. So absolutely, I'd love to do some work out here. And Seattle's been uh, has responded to me in a very welcoming way. So. And your goals now in acting, I mean, is it just kind of to see what comes your way? I've been, you know what? I've been pretty fortunate. When I started acting, when I left the government, I said I didn't know anything about acting, and so I said, okay, I'm going to set a goal for myself. And I remember to this day what it was. I was in my cubicle and I said it. I want to do good work consistently because. I didn't know anything about it. I just didn't want to look, you know, be a fool out there. And so I feel like I've, I've, I've met that goal and I, I, and I try hard to continue to meet that goal. Right now, I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm, I'm doing a, a, a reoccurring on The Good Wife, which is a great show, a right, show of good quality. Good show. quality. Yeah. Um, I have a movie coming out in, in August and I'm on stage right now. So as far as acting, I think I've, me, I've, I've, I'm continuing to meet my goals. Um, but yeah, I'd love for good projects to continue to come my way. All right. Well, I hope it brings you back to Seattle for a little more theater work as well. Thank you. Benga Akinabe. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having okay. me. Okay. Local production and broadcast of Conversations at KCTS 9 is made possible in part by KCTS 9 members and by a major grant from the Floyd and Dolores Jones Foundation and by viewers like you. Thank you.